Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I'm Kyla Watson here with Phil Long on a very sunny morning. Yeah, it's a beautiful fall day, that's it for is. sure. It is. I know. This, this is my favorite time of the year. Yes, this whole week we've been very lucky with some beautiful weather, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, this is probably unlike October, but mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody would agree that we'll take it. Right. And the worst part about it is the risk of fire and so forth, but it is beautiful mm -hmm. and a good drying week for corn especially right absolutely well we'll enjoy it while it's here yep. it might <laughs> cool down here coming up quick <laughs> it is iowa so it is midwest i should say yes all right well today we're going to be talking about the impact of nitrogen in soybeans and we're standing in front of kind of a fun plot here this morning yeah yeah this is our seed treatment study mm -hmm. um, we have it here in alexander and then as well up in the north in north dakota um, so two locations on this and we're actually looking at uh, lots of different types of seed treatments. Some that uh, growers ask about on occasion. It seems like about every year I get some questions on certain products that maybe uh, you know help out with things like SDS or you know different seed treatments um, that we're also looking at to maybe strengthen and add in down mm -hmm. the line. See if you know we we want to stay on the cutting edge, obviously. So. Uh, a lot of exciting things out here. It may look boring, but <laughs> there's actually lots of treatments out here uh, that we're going to be able to look at once we get to harvested. So. Okay, very good. Results will be coming yeah. for that once it's harvested and we can yep. take a look at what we've got. Yeah, it should be in the next few days, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Right, okay. So. Well, that ties directly hand in hand with our topic, which is nitrogen in soybeans and the importance of it. Yeah, so nitrogen in soybeans, we, we don't talk a lot about it, but I get mm -hmm. a lot of questions about it. Um, because, you know, well, number one, the soybeans require a lot of nitrogen. I mean, if you look at how they compare to corn, it, it, just per bushel, on a per bushel basis, when you harvest the field of soybeans, soybeans are taking up about five pounds per bushel of nitrogen. Wow. So if you're harvesting a 60 bushel crop, that's over 300 pounds of nitrogen that the this soybean crop requires to put out a 60 bushel an acre yield. Okay. Uh, compared to corn, where it's typically on you know about 1.3 is kind of the standard that we use per mm -hmm. bushel, 1.3 pounds. Um, so a lot more required here. However, you know as most know, they provide their own nitrogen underground they form an association with Brady rhizobium japonicum which is the bacterial that forms those nodules on the roots okay so we want that to happen and that to occur but just because of the sheer amount of nitrogen that they require and pushing yield boundaries obviously that's mm -hmm. part of trying to you know get to the next level exploring the options and so forth and and that's with the seed treatments obviously we have a lot of inoculants and so forth that we look into so all those things come into play but if you think about how much these nodules can provide, well, the one important th thing to note is, you know, organic matter plays a huge role in this. So typically, every year, 50 to 75 percent of nitrogen comes from the, the nodules. Okay. The rest of it's going to come from the soil, so mineralization, organic matter, converting into an available form of nitrogen for these plants. But they can provide a lot of that themselves through this. However, it does require energy. This is a symbiotic relationship, so it's a give and take. You know, soybeans get nitrogen and these little nodules take sugar from the plant. So the, the argument and the idea behind fertilizing nitrogen for soybeans is, you know, these things are taking sugars, they're taking resources from the plant. So can we provide it in a way that, that helps it be less stressed throughout the season? And, and uh, you know, there's been many, many years of research. I even worked with this some in, in my graduate school uh, career. Um, and, and it's just, t it's a tough balance because uh, you know, up front, they, they don't put these nodules on until about four weeks after planting. Okay. So it takes so many weeks, and we always see that yellow soybean look to them. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of the theories say put it up front so that it has it so that it can avoid that. However, the challenge with that is they don't establish nodules well, and if they have enough nitrogen, like in the case where I side-dressed here, I side-dressed about 80 units of nitrogen on, okay. they didn't put on nodules. And the problem with that is then when it gets to the point later in the season, like this year when it got dry, mm -hmm. uh, it needs to form nodules and that's not a good time to form it. So it, it causes a little bit of a, uh, an issue and sometimes can cause a yield decrease. So mm -hmm. putting it on at the right time and finding that balance is, is really important. But um, it's, it's really a, an interesting thing that we continue to look at because there's gonna, you know, down the road, we're gonna continue to find more ways to make soybeans yield more. But the bottom line that I make, want to make sure everybody understands, the reason that I like soybeans so much is, uh, you know, they may not yield as much as corn, but you got to remember these soybeans, when, when you put those in the tank this fall, 
Those soybeans have about 40% protein in the beans. Okay. Corn is closer to 10. 40% uh, protein in beans and about another 20% in oil. So 60% protein in oil in the, in the beans as they come out. It's an oil seed crop, mm -hmm. uh, but it takes a lot of nitrogen to produce protein. So okay. protein is very important for our animals, for us, and all these things. So that's the, the beautiful part about beans, but it takes a lot of nitrogen to get there. So. Okay. And what are some things that farmers can do this season to check how their nodulation has been going? Sure. So, you know, we talked th throughout the summer kind of about mm -hmm. scouting or tried to, you know, it's an interesting summer. But the one thing that I always tell farmers and, and dealers and anybody that's out looking at soybeans, they always say, well, I don't know what to look for in soybeans. Dig, take a shovel with you and dig them up. This right here is the one good indicator that helps you understand how the plant's doing in the field. So the nodulation and how it's forming nodules, I just mentioned that it takes you know roughly 21, 28 days before they start forming nodules and become green. Mm -hmm. So I've talked about this before, but you gotta remember, these things are gonna produce nitrogen from that early stage of about V3 or so on up to R6. So you'll see those nodules, you wanna see at least, the minimum is five. So if you're not okay. seeing anything or you're seeing around five on that main taproot, you're probably, the plant's probably struggling to find nitrogen. Um, if you're seeing eight plus, eight to 20 in that range, and you see them along the taproot, and in this case, this is the one that's nodulated, sorry. You see some out here further on the lateral roots sticking out here, you see multiples of them. If those are healthy, you know, you've got eight to 20 of those out there healthy, looking good then that's a good sign. That means the plant is doing well. Uh, above ground should look really well as what, you know, green color and, and everything else. It needs nitrogen to use the other nutrients, you know, mm -hmm. how, how it can and to, to make the most yield. So um, crucial, you know, that, that you check this throughout the season. Check and see how many of them are red and working and how many of them are brown and mushy. That means they're dead, obviously, and not working anymore. And green means they're, they're young and not working yet. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that really gives you a good indicator if you want to understand how a soybean plants growing in the field throughout the year. Um, at this point, they're expended, they're done. You know, R6, R6 and a half is when they kind of fall out. But you got to remember this plant, the biggest nitrogen uptake is from about V8, so a little bit before reproduction starts, on up to R6. And it is, a, it is an upward curve. I mean, they, they require and demand a lot of nitrogen during that time of reproduction. So, okay. Is there anything else that you would like to add on timing? Yeah, I mean, this is something that, like I said, we're continuing to, to learn more about this, but we've done, there's a lot of research on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some of it comes from upfront placement that works well. Um, but I just mentioned why that's also a problem with starting nodules later in the season. So actually some of the more interesting uh, the timing and placement for, for nitrogen on soybeans occurs when you put it farther out from the root. So a deep placement mm -hmm. or like a strip till bar or mm -hmm. something gives that soybean plant, doesn't confuse the main part of the stem and lets it nodulate and then find a little extra nitrogen a little further out. But um, in, in general, you know, there's there are cases where 15 to 20 pounds can uh, benefit a soybean crop up front, even just broadcast. Um, but to be honest, a lot of the times I see a little more response with sulfur. The nitrogen and those two play hand in hand in a soybean plant um, but it's something that we'll continue to look harder and harder at to try and find that balance and it's just it's something that we get asked a lot about so mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing but you got to remember they're trying to do their hardest to, to do what they know best and sometimes it's better to let mother nature do it the way it's intended so okay and then to wrap things up are there any foliar benefits to this yeah that's that's also another question that gets asked a lot um, but the challenge with nitrogen especially is just required in such high amounts mm -hmm. that we can't get enough on the plant. You know, those leaves are going to take it up and, and most of that's on the underside of the leaf and you can't get enough on there without burning it to get a yield response. So that's been tried a lot um, and typically are, there are some, there is some nitrogen in some of those foliar products, but um, it's better for the micros. The micros respond better and actually give you a bump or help retain pods and flowers and things like that versus trying to supply nitrogen uh, through foliar applications. So mm -hmm. foliar doesn't typically show a response, um, but uh, you know, like I said, there, there's a lot of moving pieces and it seems like you just, you just gotta fit them together like a puzzle to figure out the best, the best method, so. Okay, very good. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add this morning? You know, I think as we sit in the con combines, I think the exciting part is, is seeing the yields come in. That's what I'm mm -hmm. excited about. We have a lot of research here 
at the Latham Farm and our satellite locations uh, uh, that we're excited to share. So looking forward to that. Just look forward to seeing that coming out down the road and, and we'll continue to keep everybody in the loop. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Hopefully the sunshine sticks around. It is bright, but it is lovely. <laughs> it is. It's a nice morning. <laughs> it is a nice morning. Well, thank you for joining and thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Have a good day.